Hey everyone, so today's video we're going to be talking about the winners and losers of this updated patch. Um, sadly, a lot of the losers are pertaining to bugs, which, oh man, I just I can't tell you how frustrating it is to see balance patches like this and then all of a sudden there's just either nothing changed or the actual uh, changes that were supposed to be implemented don't work or the interactions with the hero's buffs don't work or they counteract the way that the hero is supposed to work and <laughs> I just I don't know like when stuff like this happens it's just unbelievably frustrating um, because you have to wait for a whole nother week for a bug to be fixed or that bug might not even be fixed there's something that came up with Kaysen not too long ago whenever he was introduced and I said it was a bug and it still hasn't been addressed and I noticed it again and I'll show you more video evidence of it uh, which is just yeah annoying and then there's interactions in the game where uh, for some reason it works a specific way and the developers have said that that's the way it's supposed to work logic and reason don't make sense whenever they say that it's supposed to work that way but whatever you know uh i'm gonna try and not make this a rant video <laughs> but obviously whenever you have a balance patch that people are excited about and then it just falls flat is pretty frustrating now uh, it doesn't fall flat everywhere, and we will talk about that because there are winners here, right? There are some winners. So let's talk about some of the winners, okay? The first winner that we have is Adeline. For some reason, Adeline just got her Ascended trait that was originally her Awakened trait into her normal trait, and then she just got additional buffs. I have zero idea why they did this. This hero was already really, really strong, um, you know, she added some, some nice, uh, RNG into arena defenses and RTA, you know, with her counterattacks and then her ability, uh, immunity whenever she was in her iron, ironclad, uh, mode, but now they just increased her, her damage. So there are times where if you attack her, if you attack her with a squishy unit, she can literally counterattack and kill the person. Uh, so she is a clear winner. <laughs> The other, another clear winner is Zoltan. Zoltan was an okay unit. Like he was, he was okay if he wasn't ascended to. His awakened trait, as I mentioned on one of those uh, tier list videos, is one of the best in the game, if not the best for light and dark heroes. But if you didn't have him ascended, he was, you know, so so. He was a niche pick in certain. Uh, applications in RTA but they had since given him a buff where he has the ability to recover some health on his counter attack so that is really good he was a clear winner it was great to see this buff for people you know that pull one or two light and dark legendaries and when you pull a hero that isn't really good until they're ascended is a bit of a bummer so I think Zoltan is 100% uh, a viable pick now, even without his awakened trait. Uh, some of the other winners as well is uh, Corrupt Orac. I think Corrupt Orac is a very, very strong pick right now um, for a couple reasons. One, his, his buff, which applies silence on his trait at the beginning of the turn, is a really nice change. When he's awakened, he does tons of damage if he's below 50% health. This allows you to kind of change up his build. <laughs> I think now you don't really need to run him in stun set. You still can. I don't think it's bad. But I think running him in high health and focus dragon scale is probably the way to go, in all honesty. Um, the other reason why Corrupt Orac is really good is because he pairs so nicely with Guan Yu. So Corrupt Orac's attack at the beginning of the turn counts as a bonus attack. So Guan Yu will go in and you know do a joint attack with Corrupt Orac. And there's really no way to stop this. So 
uh, he's he's risen up in value a lot because of that. So another winner that I think is a clear winner is Darcy. Now I tested uh, Darcy with Han, uh, one of my teammates from my guild. Uh, so I paired up an A4 Zoltan that had life steal on him, right? against his Darcy A5, and she beat him. This buff to the attack stat as well as damage is crazy. It is really, really strong. On top of that, she has the invincible buff now, which is a good one. Uh, if she goes, this stays on the entire turn, similar to like Rosalai, which is great. Uh, one of the bummers with... Darcy though is the immune and the invincible are not are, are still removable. So if you go up against someone like Dark Ophelia or, or or someone of that nature, they can easily remove the invincible or the immune, which is a bit of a bummer. But I think Darcy is a really really great bruiser because of this ability with the attack uh, increase as well. You can just stack crazy amounts of health on her with okay attack and it will just scale up so quickly uh she also has this the self sustain so if she takes more than 35 percent of her health she heals up based on her counter attack damage which is going to be a lot so darcy is definitely another one of the clear winners in my book um another clear winner in my mind is afroween afroni whatever i can't i can't pronounce her uh being able to attack two times per round, I think this hero can solo again. Now, thankfully, there's, I think nowadays there's enough heroes in the meta that uh, allow her to still be checked, but it's it's one of those heroes where she now turns into one of those niche picks into a hero that if she goes unchecked, she's going to take over the game. So this hero got a huge boost. I think this is how they should have nerfed her originally which is just up to two times per round instead of unlimited that was crazy but then they nerfed her into the ground with one time per round and that really stunk but uh they have since recorrected that and she again is a clear winner from uh, this patch another clear winner is thor so i wasn't sure if they were going to put the defense ignore that is on his trait onto his counter attack but they didn't so it's on his trait now and anytime he's in delusive health so if he takes any kind of damage whenever he goes to attack he's going to ignore 30 percent of the target's defense this is a great buff for thor one of the bummers for thor was his actual damage like from his basic ability did nothing all of his damage damage came from his ultimate which was on a four uh round cooldown full turn uh, four turn cooldown this was a big attack and then on top of that his counter attack is where he got most of his damage but with the 30 percent defense ignore now when he's in delusive health huge huge buff um not only will he be healing more because he's dealing more damage but all of his attacks now are going to do enough damage to make thor i think a real threat which is good because there's a lot of strong fire heroes out there and there's not a lot of really strong water heroes to be honest so thor is premium water damage dealer and uh yeah he's a clear winner in this buff so a hero that i think a lot of people are still sleeping on and this was brought to my attention from uh from machine is donovan so donovan i think is a really slept on champion with his buff he now uh, will recover health a lot of his damage is based off of true uh, he has a true damage based off of his max health on his ultimate which is equal to 25 percent this is really strong he has decent base health but uh the nice thing is is if he's ascended and booked you can probably get him up to 35 percent health so this is really nice. Uh, the reason why I think he slept on is there's a couple of heroes in the meta that are really pesky. You know, you have Shark Salandre, you have Vengeful Hassel, you have Ralph that have these big shields. 
as well as Alicia, although that one is a little more uh, uh, situational because obviously Alicia can just one-shot Donovan. But if you have multiple threats and Alicia has to pick and choose, his his special ability to remove the shield might actually come up against Alicia. The nice thing about this special ability is Donovan does not need focus to remove the shield. So this is this is a really big, big buff to him. Uh, the recovering of the max health and then reducing his rage from five to four, I, I think is really strong. And his ascension is really good. You know, gaining that bonus turn is really, really nice. So I think he is another one of the clear wins. So we're going to talk about uh, the losers now. And, you know, a lot of this actually pertains to a bug. So Cordelia got nerfed, or they thought she got nerfed, but she's still not working the way that she should. There's a lot of times where uh, she'll go up against heroes like, uh, she'll go up against heroes like Crazy Durzag, <laughs> who puts up block on his trait, uh, as well as Rosalai also includes the block. Uh, Cordelia will still morph these heroes, so they did not fix her. She is still bugged, which is a bummer because I think they've tried to fix this, I don't know, two or three times, and they just don't do it or don't do it right. I, <laughs> I just don't know what's going on. But yeah, those, those heroes are losers in this. Uh, Cordelia is still a loser, in this patch because you'd never know when she's actually going to activate it's 50 50 you know sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so whenever you're playing her in game modes like guild versus guild and rta where you're trying to get wins and it's just based on whether the code wants to work or not is very frustrating and i just don't know why they can't solve this it's you know you you got one job and one of the main fixes in this patch was to correct Cordelia, and they can't do it, you know? So, I don't know. Pretty frustrating. Uh, okay, on top of that, three main losers in this patch, in my opinion. Three main losers. And one of them is Balbareth. So, Balbareth has some weird interactions in the game. And I have some video footage, and we will jump over to it, and I'll voice over uh, on the video footage. Uh, one of them is very, very frustrating because it is working as intended. Uh, legit quote from the devs, which doesn't make any sense to me, and I'll talk about that here in a second. And the second one is his, his buff. Now, they say that it's going to be fixed, but I'm just not holding my breath. Uh, based on his buff, his new ascension was his attacks deal bonus damage, uh, bonus true damage equal to 20% of his health. So this really increases his damage output. But the problem is, is if he kills somebody with this true damage, his trait ability does not reset, right? So on his ultimate ability... It says if he kills an enemy with his ultimate, it refreshes the trait ability cooldown, which revives him back to 100% health and gives him an ability immunities uh, buff, right? The problem is, is if he kills somebody with that true damage, this doesn't work. So <laughs> it's such a risk to use this ultimate on somebody because you don't know if the damage from his ultimate is actually killing somebody or... If it's the true damage. So again, they said they were going to fix this. I'm not holding my breath. I hope they fix it, you know, next week or whatever. Uh, because this hero is is kind of unusable. Because y you just don't know what the right play is going to be. Because you don't know if enough damage comes from his ultimate. Right? right. Alright, so we're starting video footage here. You'll see that Balbareth dies, right? But when he's reborn, if he kills somebody... With his uh, ultimate, he should get reborn again. So, here is... He's going to finally get his turn here. And when he goes to kill somebody... So, the Guan Yu, right? This is where he should get reborn. 
He just killed the Guan Yu with his ultimate, but, oh, look, he doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, I, this needs to be fixed, obviously, because it just completely mitigates the whole reason why Balbareth ended up being a threat in the first place, is he continues to reborn himself. But, yep, that's definitely something that needs to be fixed. Uh, the other issue with Balbareth is apparently... Uh, if he is in the back of the turn order and Dark Ophelia is on your opponent's team, and like I said, I'll show you uh, video proof of this. If he dies, Dark Ophelia then pushes him back to the next round. He won't revive himself and stay in the turn order. She just pushes him out and completely negates his trait. Okay, so here's the interaction I'm talking about. Um, you'll see here. The Oderic is going to end up, like, killing some people here. But Balbareth is at the back of the turn order, right? And what's going to happen, he's right after the Light Twin. But the Light Twin's going to ult. And she's going to give the bonus attack to Oderic. And he'll kill Balbareth. But Balbareth's, Balbareth's turn will be completely negated. He will reborn himself. But then his turn is just null and void and he goes to the next round this is what the devs see so he reborns and then this is what the devs are saying is working as intended this is so dumb it, it takes so much out of balbareth's utility but working as intended so the devs have said that this is working as intended and i i don't know if i'm missing something maybe you guys can help me see something in uh, Dark Ophelia's trait here. Let's let's read Dark Ophelia's trait. Okay? It says, cast Harp of Intimidation. For the duration, when a team member or enemy casts a special or ultimate ability, removes one positive effect on each enemy and moves the next enemy to act at the end of the action queue. I don't see anywhere in Dark Ophelia's trait where it says completely negate a hero's trait. I don't see that anywhere. Do you see that anywhere? I don't see it anywhere. On top of that, I also don't see where it says uh, push a hero into the next round if they are reborn. I also don't see that. So it's really weird that that interaction is working as intended. I just don't see it. I don't know if I'm missing something. If you guys find it or whatever, let me know. Say, Zep, you are one of the dumbest people that make content for this game. And it's clearly right here. But I don't see it. It's secretly in there. Okay. So <laughs> I'm done with that. I got a little sassy there. But uh, that is definitely frustrating because Balbareth has a chance to be awesome. Like, that's one of his applications is to counter heroes like dark ophelia because she's a little squishy so yeah she can push him to the back of the turner or she can do all that stuff but if he dies he's coming back and he's gonna one shot her with the ultimate and then you're back in business but apparently that can't be a thing because lds rule the world in this game <sighs> rant over okay moving on we have craze durzag now i don't have a video of this but twitchy does uh Similar interaction with Balbareth. This uh, true damage equal to 20% of his max health. If he kills somebody with his ultimate and it was based on the true damage, bonus damage, uh, he will not cast his special ability. Now, I, I think they're going to fix this like Balbareth, but again, I ain't holding my breath. Um, but if they fix this, then Kray Zerzag goes from a loser into a winner because... Man, his awakened trait, this guy is so good. He is so good. There are, there are combos with him, Corrupt Orac, Guan Yu, and like Vengeful Hassle, where, I mean, it's like a one-turn kill. It is absolutely crazy. Uh, so an update to Kray Zerzag was super good. So he is a clear winner if they fix that little low bug. And then the last loser here is Kaysen. This guy, just absolute garbage. You know, um, he needs Ascended 5, I think, to have enough damage to clear waves. 
which is a bummer in itself because he's good in like one area. Right now, I have a team that can clear stage 19 with him if he is booked in Ascended 5. If he wasn't bugged, but he's bugged. Which is annoying because he was bugged three months ago and they just never fixed him. I'll show you the bug right now. We'll jump to the video footage. All right, so here the the bug is with Kaysen's ultimate ability. Okay, so you see his rage bar there. It's full right now. Anytime his rage bar is full, he will have his ultimate ability to activate. Now, this is really important because if uh, his ultimate is full, he heals himself, and then he does a bonus attack with his special ability. So all throughout the fight, when his rage bar is full, he ends up doing his ultimate. Now, it, there does seem to be some kind of visual bug because whenever he does his normal attack, he's supposed to reduce a rage, and that's not happening. But you'll see there's a time where we pause the video. Um, he, he, he's going to have his rage bar full because all of the minions had just died from Nero, and it's coming up. But he won't use his ultimate. He uses his basic ability. And that is where the bug comes in, because when his rage bar is full, he needs to be using his ultimate. And that's the reason why the run ends up wiping. So we're coming up to it here. So this is where his rage bar should go down, right? So it should have went down one. So that's where I think the visual bug comes in. But you'll see here, uh, Nero will end up killing the minions. And I'll show it right here. So there's the counterattack. Now, right there, Nero just killed all the minions. And as you see, his ultimate should be full with his rage bar now being full again. But you're going to see right now, he ends up just using his basic attack. I, I don't know why he does that. So it it ends in a, a wiped run because the boss just does his big attack right there. So, as you see, he did not use his ultimate ability when he had full rage, right? This ability's cooldown is reset when rage is full. You clearly saw on the bar it was full rage. It wasn't a visual bug either because right before that, the minions die. So he definitely would have been at full rage, but for some reason, he goes in and he uses his basic ability. So, I just, I have zero idea why it's working like that. Like I said, it was working like that three months ago, but it's just never been fixed. They increased his damage, but it's not going to matter if he doesn't work the way he's supposed to work. Okay, I'm done. So one more loser, actually. It's Jerome. Uh, he was supposed to get a buff. Uh, <laughs> his buff was whenever uh, an enemy gained a shield, he would also uh, gain this sharpened edge. And then also if he was ascended five, he would gain a bonus turn immediately. Uh, the problem is, is the shield, if somebody's wearing a shield set, he procs his extra turn before the round starts. It's weird, but I have video evidence for you, of course. Uh, and this actually like wouldn't be a bad thing if they didn't want it to proc off of the guard set, uh, which is whatever. But the issue is, is if his ascension or his trait were to trigger again, it actually doesn't. So... If somebody's wearing a guard set, it eats up his extra turn. So this is a nerf, in a way. <laughs> uh, uh, I, well, maybe it just balances itself out, but I see this as a nerf. Uh, so let's jump over to that, and uh, yeah, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so at the start of the turn here, you'll see uh, he procs his bonus turn right there, right at the beginning of the round, and that wouldn't be a problem. But whenever he attacks Nero, he should get a bonus turn because Nero puts up defense up. But uh, it just completely negates his bonus turn because he already used it whenever the shield or guard set from uh, Shark Soul Andre procced. So, yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> this makes Jerome significantly worse now whenever he's awakened. So uh, I don't know if that's working as intended, but it seems to really suck. 
Anyway, that's it. Those are the winners and the losers. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.